So I've had the opportunity to drive the 2023 Lexus NX350 Hybrid for just about a week now, and much like that of other vehicles I've driven, um, I've come up with a list of likes and dislikes about this NX. Now make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel for a full review, including driving impressions here in the coming days, and uh, overall it has been very positive. And before we begin, I do want to give a huge thanks to Toyota and Lexus for sending out the NX350 for me to test and review for you guys. Um, this is the first Lexus I've actually been hands-on with and the first press loan that I've gotten from a manufacturer. Stay tuned, there are definitely more in the works here. Uh, but overall, I just want to give a huge thanks to them for sending it out for me to review for you guys. So the first thing I like about the NX is the door handle design. Now this was very apparent the first time I opened the door on this vehicle and it may look like a traditional handle at first and it fooled me, but it's actually an electronically actuated handle with a button on the backside to pop open the door. And on the inside is a very similar thing with a little button next to the actual grab handle that pops open and actuates the door latch. To me, this design works far superior to those flush type pop out door handles on certain electric vehicles these days. And yes, yes, I know they do it for both aesthetics as well as aerodynamics, but the design here found on the Lexus to me works extremely well by combining traditional design and modern technology. Now you may be asking yourself, how do you open the door if the battery is dead? Well, there's actually a manual override on both the exterior as well as the interior that is implemented extremely well and you almost cannot even tell it's there unless you actually look for it or uh, read through the owner's manual. But overall, this was one of the first things I really noticed and really liked about the Lexus NX. Now, the second thing I like about the Lexus NX is the wireless charging pad design. Note, that's not the functionality, that's the actual design of the charging pad itself. So like everything else, you can put a phone on there. It's plenty large for most larger phones currently on the market, whether that's in a case or not. Uh, but the main thing I like about this is the fact that you can slide it into the center dash area. So now the phone is out of sight, out of mind. You're not um, tempted to pick it up or anything like that. And you actually gain access to additional storage space below it, as well as an additional 12 volt charge outlet. So to me, this is the first time I've seen anything implemented like this in a vehicle. And to me, it's a great use of space given you can push the phone out of the way. It's still charging in the wireless charging pad and you gain access to additional storage space. Now, number three is the infotainment system, both the UI as well as the way it's physically implemented into the dashboard. Now, this is the larger 14 inch display available on the NX. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't have a ton of experience with older Toyota Lexus infotainment systems, but I definitely think that this is an upgrade versus those older systems, both in the UI, uh, just as well as some of the other layout features that it currently offers. Now, I've used it for several days and I think it look, works very well. The UI is pretty good. Not the best that I've used out there, but certainly very good easy to navigate. Like I said, it does support wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, among the usual aspects of XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth. You have your built-in navigation. Um, you have all of your driver assistance settings and other energy flow for the hybrid battery system on here as well. And uh, as a whole, I think it's very good. The only downside I think I have, or small complaint, is the fact that the UI can be a little bit slow to boot up upon a cold restart of the vehicle. Uh, but really, I don't think that's a huge fault of the system. And it's not so slow that it interferes with your day-to-day -day usage. So as a whole, I think this is above average for many of the UI or just navigation systems I've used. So props to Lexus for that. Now, number four is the optional Mark Levinson 17 speaker surround sound premium audio system. Now this provides up to 1800 watts of power and definitely packs a punch inside of this very small cabin in the grand scheme of things. I would say if you're an audiophile or looking to not mess with upgrading the stock 10 speaker system to an aftermarket premium audio, I would say it's well worth it to spring for the extra cost of about $1,000 for the Mark Levinson system. And as a whole, I was not disappointed. Now, number five is the automatic heated and ventilated front seats and automatic heated steering wheel here on the Lexus NX. So yes, that's right. This system has a auto feature, which allows the seats as well as the steering wheel to automatically adjust themselves depending on the ambient conditions on the interior and I assume on the exterior of the vehicle as well. So given it was mostly warm temperatures while I've had this vehicle, you know, 80s, around 90 degrees outside, um, it was mostly automatically cooling the seats every time I got inside the vehicle. And as a whole, I really never reached for the climate controls or the ventilated seat functionality. It was um, automatically adjusting dynamically depending on the temperature. And I really, again, it kept me plenty cool. At times it was a little bit on the cool side, but I'd rather have it that way than obviously sweating and being too hot. So as a whole, I was very impressed with the automatic functionality of the ventilated seat system and uh, definitely one of the highlights of the NX. Now, number six is the heads-up display resolution and feature set. 
Now, normally I would say I'm not someone that needs a heads up display or prefers a heads up display as I don't mind looking down at the cluster, seeing my speed, some of the radio infotainment, some of the safety systems and everything like that. But I will say the system inside of this NX works very well and is definitely tied to the steering wheel controls and some of the other settings. So as far as the heads up display being tied into the steering wheel controls, the little pads on the left and right side for your cruise control, some of the safety systems on the right and your volume multimedia on the left are tied to the heads up display. So as you can see, I'm here on the right side and there you can see the adaptive cruise control distance setting, the mode you're currently in and some of the other adjustments. Now, if you use the little pages icon at the very bottom, that will change what those arrows do on the steering wheel itself. So you can see cycling back and forth, there's the display that will change what is displayed up here on the heads up display as well as the digital gauge cluster. And you can move the heads up display up and down by using the arrows on this page. If you go back to the adaptive cruise control settings, those are it right there. Now on the left side, as far as the multimedia and audio, there you can see I'm rubbing my finger around the options or the arrows. If you hit the pages on the bottom, that does change what those arrows are doing. So as a whole, they are very much tied to the steering wheel and some of the other controls of the vehicle. And one of my favorite features for the heads up display is the uh, fact that it will show the oncoming traffic both left and right um, in front of the vehicle. So say you're at an intersection in a blind spot, you can't really see too well to the left or right of the vehicle. And if there is an oncoming car, the vehicle will actually pick up that someone is coming and alert you via a dynamic yellow arrow in the heads up display itself. So to me, it is very relevant for both the safety systems as well as some of the other controls of the vehicle. Now, number seven is the fact there are lock and unlock buttons on the rear doors. Now, this obviously is not a common feature among many vehicles out there, but it's not super uncommon either. I just like the fact that someone in the back can control this functionality of locking and unlocking the vehicle in case they need to exit um, or do anything like that. And I believe there's also a way you can lock out the rear occupants from using those buttons as well, because obviously you don't want kids being able to open or lock and unlock the doors as needed. So that was just another small thing that I really liked in the back seat as well. And finally, one of the aspects I like the most about this vehicle is just the overall ergonomics of the interior. Now, after living with this vehicle on a day-to-day -day basis, I really didn't come across too many things where I thought, wow, that's not easy to reach, wow, that's not easy to control, or like, wow, this isn't ergonomically pleasing to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the dash design around the infotainment system is angled toward the driver, so that is very easy to use. All the buttons in the center console, for the most part, are pretty much easy to reach within a resting position of your hand. Now, my hand pretty much lays on side of the shift nub or shift knob itself, so all the buttons around in that area are pretty pleasing to use, and I really, again, didn't have any complaints as far as that goes. And one of the most ergonomically pleasing things goes back to my first like, and those are the electronic door handles. So using the door handles on the doors, um, your hand pretty much rests in that area anyway, like you're going to push open the door. So simply by pressing your thumb against that button allows you to just open the door and push it all in one motion. Similar to that of certain pickup trucks on the market as well that integrate the um, unlock handle in the little cubby where your hand normally would rest. So as a whole, it just really was a very ergonomically good cabin. Didn't have many complaints in that regards. And I would say overall the use of materials although there is a little bit more gloss black than I would like, um, isn't overbearing or overwhelming in that regard. Now, my first dislike here on the interior has to do with the actual physical space or the amount of room my knees have. So for example, if I put it in my rough driving position, now I'm a pretty average five foot nine dude, have an average build. Um, I'm really not heavy or on the bigger side of things. And as a whole, I would say in my rough driving position, my knees oftentimes would find myself hitting the center console as well as the door area. Now, luckily there is a good amount of padding both on the door and the center console. So it really wasn't uncomfortable in that regard. But I would say if you like to go spread eagle here in the inside or just a larger individual, uh, you might not be the most comfortable inside of the cabin itself. So that was my number one dislike. And the thing that I just noticed the most is that I couldn't open my legs quite as I would normally do in my personal vehicle. So I'd say maybe there's a, roughly an inch or two less overall between the overall width of the door and the center console. Now, my second dislike was actually brought up by somebody else that sat in the back seat of the NX and uh, were a little bit on the shorter side of things. And that has to do with the seatbelt angle as well as the overall height. And I know typically rear seatbelts don't have any adjustment like the fronts do. Uh, this would help this situation quite a bit. So the issue they were having, they were a little bit on the shorter side, is the fact that the seatbelt would straight up rub against their neck just like this. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this has to do with the fact that the seat backs on this particular vehicle are maybe just a little bit taller 
or the mounting location of the seat belt is a little bit taller than some of the other vehicles they've been in or just other vehicles in general. Uh, as you can see, I really don't have that issue. It's in a normal kind of shoulder position here. But I would say if you're on a little bit of a shorter side or need to ride in the rear seat of this vehicle frequently, is that go, you should go sit in an NX rear seat yourself put the actual seat belt on and see how comfortable it is uh, because they were having severe redness and kind of rubbing against the neck um, over time. And obviously the longer you're in the vehicle for, the more the seat belt can irritate the neck and the skin on that portion. But uh, that was just something I did want to bring up. And again, I wouldn't have noticed it had they not sat in the back seat. Uh, because I personally don't have this issue. Now, number three has to go back to the steering wheel controls, which I've mentioned a few times in this video already. Now, I really do like the fact that they are touch sensitive and the fact that they do combine multiple functionalities via these bottom buttons right here. So essentially, these buttons change exactly what controls these arrows do do. But I will say, if you're just simply looking to change or skip tracks here on the radio system, um, it's really not the easiest to do. So say I'm playing a song here. We'll go ahead and play it. And I just simply want to change the track. Well, one would assume you can just press the left arrow or the right arrow rather, and that would skip forward. But that is actually not the case. You actually have to kind of hover around it until the heads up display uh, says that you are on that button and then push it again. So it is a little bit of a two step process in that regard. You can't simply just do this and skip tracks. You kind of have to either double press or uh, hover around it and then highlight it and then skip the track. So that's just one of those things which kind of irritated me the most given my personal vehicle, I can just simply go skips the track. And uh, in this vehicle, it's more of a, a little two-step process. Now, my number four dislike is definitely the wireless charging pad. And you can see right now, it is actually aired out and not charging my phone uh, for whatever reason. Now, I found after using multiple devices in multiple days that this system really does not like any sort of camera bump or case on your device. So this is a Pixel 7 Pro, for example. It has a very thin case in the grand scheme of things. You can see it's really not adding uh, more than a couple millimeters of additional thickness to the back of the phone, and it still sits very flush on a normal surface with no movement whatsoever. But for some reason, I can leave that sitting there parked in a specific spot. It'll start charging for just a few seconds and then immediately error out and say it is not charging uh, due to whatever reason. Uh, the thickness of the case or the fact that the phone is just sticking up like one or two millimeters from the plastic surface of the wireless charging pad itself. So that's just something that did frustrate me while using this for uh, the last few days is that it really never worked properly, especially while driving around and the phone is moving around just a little bit. But I do really like the overall design, just not the fact that it actually doesn't charge. Now, number five actually has to do with the sunroof tint itself. Now, hopefully in this shot, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. These are untinted windows in the front. That is a normal tint in the back and rear section of the vehicle, but the sunroof tint itself is more yellow or brown. I'm not exactly sure why they do that. Maybe it has more UV protection, more cooling capabilities, uh, heat rejection, something like that. But in combination with this cream interior, it makes it look more yellow than it does cream. Um, so to me, that's just one of the aspects that really doesn't vibe too well is that the light coming in the sunroof being just a little bit more brown, yellowish tint to it really makes the white or cream interior look even more yellow than it really should with natural light. So just a small nitpick thing, but one thing I notice when I open and close the shade is that this cream interior definitely changes shades uh, based on the light coming in through the sunroof. Now, number six is the push button start location to start and stop the vehicle. Now, I've complained about this in a Silverado video I did. This was not the push button start, but it was rather the volume knob. And this kind of has the same uh, issue that that truck had, given that it is located somewhat behind the wiper stock and steering wheel here to the left of the infotainment screen. So say you jump in the vehicle really quick, just want to get going um, and just are kind of in a hurry. Well, you kind of have to do this weird reach around maneuver to hit this button. And I would say it's just not ergonomic to hit that button in a quick fashion. It's more of an effort to push it. Now I would rather have start stop buttons somewhere around a normal key start in this general vicinity right here. But even if they put the push start around the drive mode was, that'd be super ergonomic to get in, 
you know, just go over here, push the button really quick and get on your way. Or even if they moved it just in that little spot next to these buttons right here, it really wouldn't be so bad either, given it's just above your knee. And uh, typically that's not interfering anyway with any of these other controls up top. So I know again, that is fairly nitpicky. You're only doing that maybe uh, three, four, five times a day at most. Uh, but again, it's just something I noticed ergonomically getting in and out of other vehicles, including my personal vehicle, uh, that this is just not as ergonomic as it could be. So that's gonna do it for all of my likes and dislikes on the Lexus NX350H. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and or found something helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channen in these videos. Let me know down in the comment section below if you happen to own a Lexus NX or are looking at purchasing one, do you agree or disagree with any of these likes or dislikes on my list? Like I said, this was over about a week with the vehicle. So obviously the longer you own a vehicle, the more you'll get used to some of the feature set and how things are operated inside, or you might find additional things you'd like or dislike about it, just the more you use it on day-to-day -day life. So uh, hopefully you guys found something helpful out of this video. Once again, make sure to stay tuned and subscribe here on the channel for future content here on this NX, including my full driving review and just overall week with the vehicle, as well as a general walk around tour if you wanna know everything that this has in terms of equipment and features. So let me know your comments down in the comment section below. Once again, a huge thanks to Lexus and Toyota for sending this vehicle out for me to review for you guys. And as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.